So it's been 24 hours since I've had this MacBook with me and I put it through a few tests here and there. There's two things that have wowed me the most out of every new feature or re-edition that Apple has done to this new MacBook. So this is the cheapest build you can get as well. So $19.99 US dollars or $24.99 Canadian dollars, depending on where you are. And that is just the starting price of all of the MacBook Pros from 2021. So this is the base model, if you're wondering. Like I said earlier, there's two things that have wowed me the most. And those two features are one, the battery charging speed and the battery life. So I'm in love with MagSafe 3 because honestly, I'll tell you guys right now, it's extremely secure. It sticks right on and it's hard to disconnect. That's one problem that I faced a lot with my 2017 MacBook Pro that used only a USB-C to charge. So that would disconnect a lot. And I'm not even kidding. Sometimes my laptop would just be dead and I'm working on something, but I left it there for too long, disconnected, and I didn't know about it. Honestly, I'm happy that's gone. The MagSafe 3 is awesome. That magnetic hold is unreal. It's unreal, y'all. The second thing is the M1 Pro. It's an extreme improvement in performance of these new MacBook Pros. So for anyone that does video editing, 3D rendering, motion graphics design, photo editing, any kind of creative work, all of you guys can definitely rejoice now. So these MacBook Pros are basically a mobile workstation. And if you're like me out there, then you treasure having a powerful system for a mobile workstation. A mobile workstation gives me flexibility on how I work. I can work from just about anywhere with a mobile workstation. And for me, that's imperative because I'm always on the move. I'm not in one place at all times. This base build comes with eight core CPU, 14 core GPU, 16 neural engines, and a 16 gigabytes of unified memory, so RAM memory. And honestly, that's not even close to being what the best is. We're talking about up to 64 gigabytes with the M1 Max chip, which honestly, I cannot wait to see. Because of the new M1 Pro chip inside this laptop, I've noticed a drastic improvement or increase in the speed of video exports for all of my projects from Final Cut Pro X. So something that would usually take me about 30 minutes to export is now taking me about six minutes to export. And that's extremely important for me. And I'm pretty sure it's going to work very well with longer videos as well. Longer videos that would usually take me about five hours to export. Yeah, you heard me right. My old 2017 Intel Mac will take me five hours to export some crazy project that's 40 minutes long with a lot of timer, animations, plugins, all these different things, transitions and crazy stuff that require a lot of system memory, you know, for you to export and work with Final Cut Pro X. So that's all going to change with this. Saving as much time as possible while working is extremely important to me because that way you get to spend more time creating more projects or taking time off and resting and different things like that. The more time you can save while you work, the better. So whatever you can do to improve your workflow to give you more time, you should definitely consider doing that. And for me, that's upgrading my 2017 Intel MacBook Pro. But I'm really looking forward to testing out the one with the M1 Max chip. So the 16 inch, which I've got coming later, I will compare it to this one. So if you're new to the channel, make sure to go ahead and hit that subscribe button down below. Apart from an improvement in the time saved with this new M1 Pro chip inside this laptop, I've also noticed that everything is silky smooth. Everything moves a lot faster. I can operate multiple applications at once, even while streaming a 4K video in the background or editing a video. So it doesn't matter. I usually would not be able to do that on my 2017 Intel MacBook Pro. Let me be honest with you guys right now. I Hated that, man, I hated it. What I had to get used to doing was closing a few apps just to run one so it runs smoothly and I can you know, harness as much power and as much system memory as I can on just using that one software. That method is definitely not time efficient because that way it means that I have to wait before I can make the thumbnail for a video after editing that video in Final Cut Pro and exporting it instead of being able to do it all at the same time. Because if I'm exporting, that means my computer isn't doing much and I'd like to be able to, you know, do some edits, some photo edits, so that way by the time the video is done exporting, I have everything that I need to post it immediately. And I'm pretty sure the M1 Max is going to blow this one even out the water. All right, let's talk about the other things that I started to notice as the day went by, the first 24 hours using this laptop. So the first of them is the weight. So at the beginning, I thought that it was going to be a struggle to work with this because it felt a little heavier, you know, when I unboxed it and took it out the box because this thing weighs 3.5 pounds according to the Apple website. And to be honest with you guys, it took me no time at all to get used to that 3.5 pounds of weight. So it's not that heavy. It's easy to bring around. You can tuck it in your backpack quite easily and bring it around. You wouldn't even notice that it's in your bag. 
But honestly, if they could reduce the weight somehow in the future and the size, dimensions, all that, make it even a thinner book, that'd be awesome. But I one hand this thing now, I can even work with it just holding it in one hand and it doesn't feel heavy to hold. And that's very important when we're talking about a mobile workstation. Something else that I found that I started to fall in love with as time went by was the screen, the display. So it's larger, I know you guys might know that right now because of those thinner bezels on the side and that's also created a notch the infamous notch. So everyone's talking about the notch all over the place. I personally don't really care about it. Like it hasn't affected my work at all, at least not yet. And I've been working with different kinds of applications, mostly Apple applications. So Safari I've used with it, Oprah I've used with it, Final Cut Pro X I've used with it. So in full window mode, I've tested out all these different apps and the notch doesn't really seem to get in the way. So it's basically just in line with the menu bar of every app that I ran. But I'll be honest with you guys though, I'd rather have it not be there. A notch just kind of looks ugly. It looks off. It doesn't look right there, man. I'm not gonna front with y'all. I don't really care that it's there, but I'd rather not have it there if you asked me. If you said, Tommy, would you rather have a notch on your laptop or not? I'll definitely go with not. It just doesn't look right there, that's all. But I'm not complaining about the extra screen real estate. And I know you guys aren't either. Everyone loves more screens, that's what it is. More screen space in the same package. At some point during that 24 hour time frame, I also tested out the webcam to see how much better it's become or, cause they say and then they've added 1080p now. So it's supposed to be a lot better and there's different things you can test out with it. So I haven't really taken any calls with it. So I might do that in a day in a live video that I'll do soon. But before that, I tested it just by itself using FaceTime. I opened it up to see the quality. And honestly, guys, it looks really good. But that camera is the only reason why that notch is there. And that's honestly their justification right now. But we know that they could have put that camera right up without the notch. They don't have to have that notch right there. They could have put the camera up there. I didn't design a laptop, so I can't really say if that's the exact reason why it's there. I'm just speculating just like everybody else. But hey, if they could take it off or if they could add face ID to that little notch, I'd be grateful. I'm also loving the liquid XDR display. So the mini LED display is awesome. I didn't notice it immediately for coming from my older laptop, but as I used it more and more throughout the day, editing videos, you know, photos on Lightroom, Adobe Photoshop, all different kinds of things that requires high color. I noticed that, oh my God, this screen is crazy. I'm actually really loving this screen in comparison to what I'm used to. These new pro laptops were definitely created with creatives in mind. So people that work with a lot of color and graphics and things like that, you want to see them with as much color accuracy as possible. At least that's how I feel. As for the ProMotion technology, I haven't really seen that in its full might. So I've noticed it on Safari. The screen looks fluid and silky smooth. Something else I noticed, but I didn't notice this one off the rip because I didn't use it as often. But then as the day went by, I decided to open up Spotify because that's what I do most of the time when I'm working alone and it's quiet around me and I don't have my headphones with me. What I do is I play directly off of the computer. I open Spotify and play directly off of that. So with the new six speaker system on these new MacBook Pros, I've fallen in love with the bass. The bass is the most important thing that I've noticed. It sounds crazy, almost like it's coming out of a theater, a cinema on a little, little laptop. The difference between this and listening to music on my 2017 MacBook Pro is miles, miles apart. Miles apart, y'all, it's crazy. I'm in love with it. So I plan on using it more now. At this point, I don't even think I'm going to need external speakers to use with this MacBook Pro. It's crazy, y'all need to test it out if you're going to be picking up one and listen to how good the bass sounds. That's just me, that's my two cents on that, man. So the next thing we're gonna talk about is the keyboard. And for this one, anyone that works with keyboards a lot, probably loves to have mechanical style keyboards with that tactile feel. So that's what the new Magic Keyboard on this MacBook feels like, and it's awesome. So I didn't really care too much when I first unboxed it and looked inside the box and tried out the buttons, you know, just kind of mess around with it. It felt normal, it was okay, it felt great, you know, it felt like a new product. But as I use it throughout the day, I realized, oh my goodness, this is actually something I can get used to. I love it, I love it, it's so, fluid, it feels good to work with. Each key is now full height as opposed to how short they used to be 
on the older Intel MacBooks, at least on the one that I had before. Finally, I'm gonna talk about the ports. So the re-addition of all ports like SD ports, the HDMI ports, even more Thunderbolt ports and the MagSafe 3 charger ports. All these different ports are just gonna you know, foster more connectivity. So that way you can use these MacBooks with a lot of different devices now. So before I'd have to use the USB-C hub with my SD card, to be able to access anything on it. So I can't just pull out the SD card from my camera and slide it into my laptop. But now, that's exactly what I'm doing. That's what I've done with this laptop over the last 24 hours. And it's made my workflow so much more fluid. So things are a lot easier and faster. The HDMI port is also a welcome re-addition back because most of these ports were just re-added back. They've always been there from the original MacBook Pros and I don't know why Apple took them off, but hey, I don't really care. I'm just loving them right now. So the HDMI port on this, I tested as well and it works great, man. It works great with my 4K TV, everything looks pristine so when casted directly from the laptop to the TV using that HDMI port but it even gets better if you're someone that works with a mobile workstation like me and you know tend to connect your laptop to an external monitor to expand your view so that way you have more screen area so now we have more options without the extra clutter of the USB-C hub so we can now use any display that doesn't even have a USB-C input because that's usually what I would look for to avoid clutter using USB-C hubs and whatnot but now doesn't matter if it's only got a HDMI port because you can cast directly to that now with the new HDMI port. And finally, the last port is the high impedance audio jack. So that'll be awesome to use if you have high impedance headphones. I don't use high impedance headphones, so I can't really test that. I don't really know how that works, but I've tried it with my Beats by Dre, listen to music, and I love it. It's awesome, it works great, nothing wrong with it at all. I only had to charge this laptop once throughout the entire 24 hours of use once i'm not kidding right now and i use it heavily because that's the thing is when you get a new product for the first time everyone tends to use that device a whole lot more on that first day we get really excited about it and we put it to work the most on the first day and that's what i've done with this new 14 inch macbook pro over the last 24 hours so out of everything like i said the two things that wow me the most battery life and the M1 Pro chip. So the system on chip architecture is really blowing my mind right now and I'm loving it. I'm loving it all the way through, but time will tell how long it holds up against competitors. And I hope that it is brought to other devices like the iPad. It'll be really nice to be able to, you know, edit videos using Final Cut Pro and you know, all kinds of different work directly off of the iPad. That'd be awesome, man, especially video editing. That's the one thing that I'm looking forward to in an iPad. Like I've never owned one and I don't see the point of it. Like my phone is basically an iPad. I have an iPhone 13 right here. It's massive, man. Like I don't need an iPad. It's not useful to me, at least from my perspective. Some people might need it, you know, kids, I love playing on those tablets. You might use it for work. There's so many reasons to have an iPad, but for me, I don't see the points and I don't get tech that I don't need. And for the battery life, I'm pretty sure it's because I'm coming from something that I've always had to charge at least six to seven times throughout the day. That's the minimum. Sometimes I even have it just plugged in the whole way through. I just can't have it not plugged in because I'm worried it just might die. But with this new MacBook, charging is not an issue. I've loved every single hour I've spent with it over the last 24 hours. And the M1 Pro has severely impacted my whole workflow. And I'm talking all the way from video editing to photo editing to replying emails, watching 4K videos, everything is a whole lot better. For my verdict on my first 24 hour review of this new MacBook Pro, I'll say if you're not someone looking for something that's ridiculously powerful, this will get the job done. If you're looking for a middle ground between cost and efficiency with these machines, these new 2021 MacBook Pros, then a 14 inch base model will definitely do the trick. So I'm pretty much okay with everything they've added to the new laptops. The only one thing that's kind of, you know, throwing me off is that notch. So if that was off, it would probably be the perfect laptop, at least in my mind. Let me know down in the comment section what you guys think about that notch. So that's basically it on all the features right there, at least everything I've noticed over the last 24 hours. I'm gonna keep testing this over the week, you know, keep working with it, cause it's my laptop now that I'm working with, pending the time that I get the 16 inch M1 Max version. So I'm going to keep working with this one and seeing how well it, you know, handles my workflow, which honestly it already is doing in a spectacular manner. But that's basically it for this one right here. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, you already know what to do, man. Give the video a thumbs up. Spam it for me, y'all. And I will see you guys in my next video. It's your boy Midas, and I'm out, y'all.